I'm, uh, I'm Bob Webb. I, my wife and I own Arid Lands Greenhouses in Tucson, Arizona. And I'm going to be talking today about Sansevierias. But first, I would like to pause this presentation for an advertisement. <laughs> uh, I am the new chairman of the International Sansevieria Society. And my coming out party, among other things, is going to be today at noon at the Campanile Room. Um, that room is just if you go out the doors and turn towards the left, it's back in the corner over there. And everybody's invited. You don't have to be a member of the International Sansevieria Society. And I'm here to say that most of us don't have two or three heads, and we usually don't bite. So please, at noon today, we're going to be giving away some plants and just having a, a nice little discussion. So I want to talk to you about Sansevierias. And if you came in the front entrance of this hotel, you might have seen some things there that are trifas Sansevieria trifasciata hybrids. I want to just tell you, those are not representative of this extremely diverse and wonderful group of plants. So by the end of this talk, I hope to convince you of that little point, because if you think that mother-in-law tongue actually represents a Sansevieria, you're wrong. I was told a little horror story in my booth yesterday, I think it was. Somebody came up and said that they had entered a beautiful Sansevieria pinguicula in a plant show, and they were disqualified by the judges who said, not making this up, that's not a Sansevieria. <laughs> Do you see the need for this presentation? Okay, first off, I'm gonna go for some basics, and then I'm gonna get really deep into some science, okay? So first and foremost, there's a couple different sizes of Sansevierias. There's an arborescent group, and there's the acolescent shrub. So there's big ones and there's small ones. There's broad-leafed ones, and there's the cylindrical leaf ones. So there's a lot of diversity here. Um, I need to just briefly review a little bit of the taxonomic structure of what we use in systematic botany. Uh, we had a family, the family is the Dracenaceae, but uh, the genus is Sansevieria, then there's a subgenus under that, there's section series, the species is whatever, say Trifasciata, and then there's below that. So there's the structure of how you organize genera under families, and that's the first point I'd like to get to. Because the genus Sansevieria is so diverse, in order to really understand it, you've got to put a structure on it. Horst Finning, in the 1980s, the German, was one of the people who reinvigorated Sansevierias, if you will, and started to do some interesting taxonomic things before he died suddenly. But one of the things he did was he proposed this structure. Paul Bugua, who wrote The Floor of Tropical East Africa in 2007, quoted this without properly citing uh, Horst Fennick, so that was not very good. Uh, Jankowski came along and for some reason changed things to sections and changed some names. Now, let me repeat what I just said. There's genus, there's subgenus, and then down lower there's sections. There's a fellow in Germany who then came along and said, oh, there should be series, and had his own little scheme of how to do it in series. So what I think is that the the um, differences are so profound, it should be in subgenera. So I'm going to be using this, the subgenera Sansevieria, which is the most numerous species in the group, and the ones that you probably recognize the most. The subgenus Capitatus, and these are, are very interesting plants, usually from East Africa. And then the subgenus Paniculatus, and I'll be mostly, most of my talk is going to be about these two subgenera, so we can get some of the species in them. So, one of the first questions that was raised by a guy by the name of Boss, who did the, the Dracenaceae of West Africa, was he says, ah, heck, the flowers of Dracenas and Sansevierias look exactly the same. Let's just put them together and get rid of the, the genus Sansevieria altogether. And so this would be, oops, sorry, this would be a Sansevieria. <laughs> okay, like that, Sansevieria right there. Uh, okay, so it's a, a fairly important question is, do we taxonomically keep the Dracaenas separate from the Sansevierias in terms of the genera? Well, what I've done is initiated some DNA work with a fellow that lives not too far from here in Mesa, Arizona. 
where we're trying to use DNA to, to start to unravel some things. Now the biggest problem with that, if you know anything about DNA related to the hobbies that we're all engaged in, almost everything that we're interested in collecting is fast evolving things. And as a result, the DNA is not a whole lot different between various species and particularly between various genera. I mean, the quotation that I had was that you and I and everybody in this room share 50% of the genes of a banana. Okay? So you can't expect that DNA is going to answer all your questions. So the approach that's going on here is to use DNA along with characters in order to try and unravel some things. First story is that yes, Dracaenas are separate from Sansevieria. But the second one is that that subgenus I told you about, Paniculatus, just with the first effort we had, we were able to segregate that in a realistic way to support that subgenus, Paniculatus, the arborescent ones. And there's some other questions that we've been able to get after, but it's just such a fast evolving genera that, um, genus that we have to actually get much more data. So this is a very boring thing. This is called a clade diagram or a phylogen phylo uh, phylogenetic diagram or just a tree. But I want to point some things out here. Number one, the Dracaenas are clearly, oops, the Dracaenas are clearly separated at the highest levels of this diagram from the Sansevieria. So we have DNA support for that. You don't even worry about that anymore. Here's the paniculatus group right there in the middle, all grouped together. This is a, a thing that shows a couple of things that have always been my pet peeves. Why is Cylindrica Cylindrica different from Cylindrica Patula? No, they don't show that. Same with Pearsoni Rhodesiana. We can lump those two together. And then two of my favorites, Parva and Dunerai, we can lump them together and reduce some things instead of splitting some things out. And then I'll get to this in a big way here in a minute. The Sansevieria Sofruta Cosa complex basically all plots together, which again supports that little subgroup out of the, unit, uh, uh, the genus Sansevieria. The rapidly evolving species, and you can't expect all answers to come from DNA. Yeah, you can tell everybody in this room apart with DNA analysis, but that's because people spent about a billion dollars on the Human Genome Project and know the genetics of that. I don't have a billion dollars to spend on Sansevieria yet. I'm expecting that there's going to be a coffee can out in the sand. <laughs> Please donate, give as much as you can. So, um, you know, this is not a Sansevieria. That is Dracaena cinnabari. This is not a Sansevieria. That's Dendrocycia socotrona. That's not a Sansevieria, that's a Denium socotrona. And that's a complete idiot right there. <laughs> Standing on the island of Socotra in Yemen. <laughs> A place that I probably will never be able to visit again, unfortunately. So I'm going to go through a few of these groups. This is just sort of a laundry list. This is the subgenus Sansevieria. Here's a few of the things in it. And I wanted to just point out this really lovely variegated Sansevieria volkensii that Lynn Newton and I and Tony found in uh, Tanzania. It's really nice. And again, the diversity of form here is such that you have broadleaf species mixed with these cylindrical leaf species. And I think more work needs to to happen to see if this group needs to be broken down a little further for better understanding of its members and how they relate to each other. Um, this is Sansevieria frequens, one of the more recently described species by Juan Chahinian. It happened to have uh, been found in Tony Dyer's backyard. Uh, Tony Dyer, and these names will maybe make a little sense to some people in the audience, he is Guilford Poes's brother-in-law. And when we went from Guilford Poes's ranch, as he calls it, or farm, to Tony Dyer's farm, we flew and it took us 45 minutes even though they butt right up next to each other. That's how big the landscape is in Kenya it's when we went to see this particular plant. So this is the subgenus Capitatus and some of the members of it. Uh, this happens to be a very common Sansevieria in cultivation called Sansevieria kirkii and it's in photographed here in coastal Tanzania. So a lot of these, the flowers come right out of the ground and they're, they're capitate heads. They're like little heads of flowers as opposed to on a, a spike kind of a thing. This is Sansevieria fisheri, one of the better known members of the Capitatus subgenus. And then finally the group that's the arborescent ones. 
Um, this is uh, Sansevieria dumitescens over here, and here's a list of some things. So you have everything from Sansevieria pendulicula, which is a fairly small plant, in with things that are quite tall. Some of these that grow way over my head, and I'm two meters. I'm a good measuring stick because I'm two meters high. So this is Sansevieria dumitescens. Now I, I need to introduce my good friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Leonard Newton. Lynn Newton is now in England, but he was in Nairobi, Kenya for a long time. And the first trip I took with Tony uh, to Africa was actually to visit Lynn Newton and take a little field trip. I went there thinking, oh heck, I want to just go see aloes. I want to see aloes. I want to see aloes. And I came home with a suitcase load of Sansevierias. And it was all over for me and there's no vaccine or cure. But this is one that <laughs> after that trip, Lynn decided that um, he really needed to work on these arborescent ones. So he described this species, Dumatescens. Oops, sorry. Yeah, Sansevieria Dumatescens, which is representative of that group Paniculata. So Lynn and I are loosely trying to revise this, gener this genus. I, I really have it as a, a life goal to unravel this stuff. And one of the first steps of it is where are the type localities for the species? So this is a paper that just came out in the journal Sansevieria, which Alan Michael Busk and I are co-editors of. And uh, this is a, a map that shows where the type localities are for all the Sansevierias. Now, there's some problems here because Sansevieria collecting began actually in the 18th century with Hyacinthoides, that's the species that defines the genus of uh, Sansevieria. And a lot of them were from the 19th centuries, and many of the, the plants that were described by uh, Brown in his monograph from 1915 were actually garden plants in Europe. And they, they had such a poor record of keeping track of where things came from that some, some crazy things happened in terms of naming. But for instance, all these West African plants, these blue circles indicate we don't know where in those countries they came from. We just think they came from those countries. The same with the Congo, India of all places. We have no idea where those plants actually came from. But other ones we do, and you can see this dense cluster right here. So the newest species of Sansevieria that was just described earlier this year by Tom McCoy and John Lovranos is Sansevieria dofarica. I'll show some pictures of this species later, but with the addition of Sansevieria dofarica, we have 76 species of Sansevieria, given that some things have been lumped together and eliminated and there's some new species that are being described. So it's actually a very large group comparable to uh, the genus Hwortia, uh, before Bruce Byers stuff got all taken apart by other people. So it's, it's a serious set of uh, plants and there's a lot of things that could be described as new species as I'll show you. But one of the things I wanted to do was uh, to actually understand where they grow in terms of how many species are in each country of Africa and it's in the subcontinent of Asia. So I made this little map up. You can see that West Africa basically has very few plants, mostly at Sansevieria liberica, but there's also Cynogambica up in here. Uh, you can see that India and the Indian subcontinent, very few species, really. Um, the Arabian Peninsula, very few. But the, the point is that if you want to go see Sansevierias, buy yourself a ticket to Nairobi and go look around anywhere. You can practically trip over the dang things in Kenya, because East Africa is the biodiversity hotspot. And it's the place where the most rapidly evolving species seem to be. And that's where a lot of the new species seem to be coming out now. Uh, Juan Chihinian was describing a lot of stuff from Malawi, Zimbabwe, in this area. I think that that's pretty much been tapped out. So now it's up in this area where a lot of the new things are coming from. So what I've been doing with Lynn Newton and by myself with my wife, Tony, is going around to look at type localities of plants. Because one of the problems that's gone on, as I've said, is that a lot of plants were collected with no location data. They went to Europe, were planted in gardens, and then they made their way into the trade. And so some of the things that are in the trade just are not recognizable when you go out into the wild and actually look at plants that from the type localities of where they originally came from. So one of the more common ones is Sansevieria dalii, a broadleaf species. We went to the type locality south of Kampala, Uganda and looked around. Uh, this is me, I'm still as old and fat and ugly as that photograph. Um, but you can see this, 
it's almost no variegation on it. The plants that I have in cultivation are this, these really pat highly patterned plants, but these are very dark colored and very tall, much bigger than anything I have in cultivation. So it makes me wonder just what is it that I have in cultivation? Now this is another one that has always intrigued me, Sansevieria mylotica. There was a variety of obscura that was described as supposedly very different from the original species. And this is the type locality near Entebbe, Uganda. And sure enough, it beats the description of the original species. So we can discard that variety and actually simplify things a little bit just with this particular plant being at its type locality, what it really should look like. Now, this one's another one that's kind of vexing for us because um, Sansevieria finnegai was described by Paul Bugwa from some material in uh, a collection at Kew, I believe. And uh, this collection at the type locality near Lindy, Tanzania, we went there and I had another guy that I'll bring up a little later. That's just Sansevieria canaliculata, one of the more widespread species that's out there in Madagascar and the uh, east coast of Africa. So again, we can take some things out of the mix. One of the things that I'm really interested in is again, looking at natural variability of these species in the wild. This is Sansevieria hyacinthoides, one of the more common ones in cultivation. This is near its type locality near Udenhog, South Africa. And it's a really big stand of this particular species, okay? Well, uh, my wife and I happened to find ourselves at Kruger National Park. And, which is uh, quite a ways from Utenhog, and uh, found this thing right here. And that is also called Sansevieria hyacinthoides. Really? Okay, this one is hyacinthoides. It's a type of locality. It's got flexible, smooth leaves. This one at the Cougar National Park has really stiff leaves, and the undersides are rough on those leaves. This reminded me of a lot of things that I'll show you in a little bit from East Africa. And I've been told by people who've been to Mozambique, I haven't been there yet, that a lot of this kind of stuff grows up to Mozambique too, which is a, Mozambique's a very large country and pretty much unexplored in terms of the taxonomy of Sansevierias. So there's a lot of things that can be done to resolve things. This could be the original Sansevieria macrophylla. And that's what I'm working on here to try and see if we can unravel this and add another species to South Africa's species list. Because right now, these two are considered to be synonymous species, and they are nothing alike, other than the fact that they're Sansevierias. Sansevieria aethiopica is a very interesting group of plants as well. It's one that bears considerable study because it's highly diverse. It grows all the way from Namibia into Botswana and down into South Africa. And there are lots and lots and lots of forms of this thing. This just happens to be two of them in the wild. This is a fairly typical species. That's a broadleaf one with lots of margin on it. You can see the red margin on it. I have a form that's called the little leaf form, where the, the leaves are about the width of a pencil. And then we have other things that look more like a Madag uh, Mozambique type species that are also listed under Aethiopica. So there's a lot of variability in this that needs to be worked out. But the one thing that I found was that a friend of mine, Hedard Marx, who lives in Otskuren, South Africa, found a Sansevieria near Mount Stewart in the Eastern Cape province. And he knew that I was interested in Sansevierias by that point, and he hates the thing. You know, he, he he's a Hoorthia guy, you know, and a Euphorbia guy. So he, but he said, you know, you, know you, you really should have this thing. So he sent it to me, and sure enough, this darn thing stays dwarf form in cultivation. And we went and visited this thing near Mount Stewart in January of this year and verified, yeah, those are dwarf plants. So Hedard probably hates this idea, but I'm probably going to name this a subspecies after him. He'd rather have a really nice, well, he has, he has a Hawarthia named after him, and it's the hardest Hawarthia in the world to grow. And he just absolutely hates that fact too, so I'm giving him another species to hate. <laughs> Okay, so I want to talk about a few recently described species here. One of them I just mentioned, and I'll mention it again, is uh, Sansevieria dofarica. But this guy is really interesting to me because uh, it's part of this complex that I've been trying to work on and unravel. I've already told you that the Sansevieria sofruticosa complex actually fits together in terms of its DNA. So it's really kind of nice there, but it doesn't fit together in terms of the, the forms that are out there, especially the leaf form. 
One of the things that really characterizes it is you can see these runners or rhizomes that are all along here. Um, those uh, are characteristic of this particular group of plants. So this is Sansevieria bella, a very bad looking summer. It's eaten by goats of all things. And uh, Lynn Newton took us to this. Uh, he assures me that the plants that he collected uh, the further to the west of this are much nicer looking. Um, this is Sansevieria ballii on nearest type locality at Casagal Canyon, hanging down over the rocks is kind of characteristic of it. But it's very, very short leaves. And then this one. So this is the one that I described with Lynn Newton called Sansevieria labifolia. Labifolia means smooth leaf. Most of this complex of plants has very rough leaves. That we encourage you, by the way, to touch your Sansevierias. I mean, don't get weird about it or anything, but you know, touch <laughs> your Sansevierias because that's a lot of the clue as to what things are, okay, is, is the feel of the leaves, how rough they are, smooth they are, how glossy they are, things like that. But this is the, the plant that I collected, and um, this is the original plant. I paid this little girl about five rand, which is pennies, to hold this thing for me because we found it, uh, this is, by the way, Euphoria magna capsula. This is actually really close to Joy Adamson's house at Lake Naivasha. Joy's long dead, but her house is now a museum. Um, the leaves on this thing are up to a meter long. And, you know, that's just incredible for this particular complex. So we described it as a, a new species. Here's a, a particularly thick stand of it. And uh, this is me with Lynn Newton. And, uh, this is the best photo I can give of Lynn looking <laughs> back. I got him pictured with all kinds of other really cool plants, but just not with Sansevierias, which is rather unfortunate. But Sansevieria labifolia is one species that's been recently described. But the complex of plants is very interesting and it bears some, some discussion. Um, when you look at this complex of plants, it's a big group of things that are all from East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, and Somalia. And the leaf size is very interesting because you go from the one that I described in terms of the biggest leaves around to the smallest leaves, which are Sansevieria ailensis. Now there's also a couple other things here, uh, Gracilis and Gracilima up in here. Uh, I think before, Juan Chihinian should have thought about this a little more carefully before he raised Gracilima to a species status, because his original name for it was Gracilis variety or subspecies Somaliensis. That better fits this, because I think these two really need to be lumped together. But other than that, you can see that there's a diversity of leaf size, from really big, a meter long, to really short. If you want to see one of these, which I consider to be the holy grail of Sansevierias, I got one on my table over there in the sales booth. You can't buy it. It's way too expensive. You can't afford it. But uh, that's <laughs> the bad point. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, um, I got this plant originally from Ernst Specks in Germany back in the early 1990s. I didn't know diddly dunk about San. I still don't know diddly dunk about Sansevierias, but I got this plant and I thought that's a really cool plant. And then it turns out it's a really, really slow growing thing. Really slow growing. It's from Isle of Somalia, which is up in here. That's where pirates are. So I'm not going to go to Isle of Somalia anytime soon. But uh, Alan Michael Bust had a plant and it's flowered now, and this is it. And we decided to honor Juan Chihinian because Chihinian has described so many interesting species from Africa, especially Somalia, that we thought we would honor him with this. And so the next issue of, of the Journal of Sansevieria will have this species description with this uh, particular flower described. So it's one of the newer ones that's not yet published. But I want to look at this complex too, because this is one of the coolest ones as far as I'm concerned, is the Ehrenbergii com uh, complex. And it has all these little issues associated with it, as you'll see. Now, I have um, plants, or I've seen plants from these locations, all the way from Oman to Yemen. The original uh, species was described in the Sudan. Uh, here's plants that Lebrano's collected near Mogadishu in Somalia. I've seen plants there, and I've seen plants from that area of Uganda. These are all supposed to be the same thing, okay? Same thing. Well, here's my wife, my lovely wife, standing next to Sansevieria Ehrenbergii, which is way over her head, and here I am grasping one that the leaves are up there, okay? That is interesting. This is it growing in Guilford Poas' yard on the Lycipia Plateau in Kenya. This is Patricia Poas, 
who's standing there explaining things to my wife. So a big, big species like this with really long leaves that are upwards of two to three meters long, okay? Let's go to human. I don't think we're gonna go, any of us are gonna physically go there, but we'll virtually go there right now and look at this. This is the, what the original Sansevieria arenbergii looks like. It's a really interesting species that is acolescent, okay? Leaves are generally less than 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters long. Uh, it's a beautiful thing uh, that I just am so fortunate to have found in the wild. Uh, this, by the way, there's several other things here that might be of interest. This is Euphorbia inarticulata right there. This is Aloniburiana right there. This is the Euphorbia fruticosa right there, and there's undoubtedly some other things of interest in there if I looked at it closely. Uh, I can, but let's get back to that, okay, because we could, we could have that discussion all day. All right, so that's Aaron Bergiak. Now, I have to bring in Robusta here, even though they're not related, because people get this confused in too. But notice how upright this is in terms of the leaves. So uh, this is all I'll say about Robusta is it doesn't belong in this group. Now, this one, people were confusing this East African stuff with this one. So here it is at the type locality right on the ocean at Lindy, Tanzania, okay? Uh, notice how it just has this really beautiful Sansevieria parodi, has this really beautiful, uh, gracefully arching rosette that's all the stickest. It's a, it's a great plant, but it is not Arenbergii, or nor is it that East African stuff. And people have actually said in print that the East African stuff is this. So why you go to type localities, okay, to, to try and answer these questions. So it just so happened that Alan Michael Bust had this plant of, uh, Want you, uh, of uh, John Lebrano's 23295 that flowered recently. And there it is. There's the, the missing link, if you will, for this. We're going to call this thing Sansevieria Lebrani. It's about time somebody uh, honored John Lebrano's in the Sansevieria world because of his incredible contributions to this genus. And we think that this, oops, sorry that this is the same thing as that plant that my wife's standing right next to. That is the missing link and answers the question of what is that stuff in East Africa. So um, our first trip uh, to look at succulent plants in Arabia and Africa, Tony and I happened to find ourselves in Southern Oman. And yeah, this is now called Sansevieria dufarica. That's me trying to take a picture of this thing. And uh, this is my lovely wife. And uh, if she looks a little slushed, it is because at that point in time, given it was the first succulent plant we had seen, she was hyperventilating. And I am not making that up. You can ask her yourself. Because these things are so incredible. They're way different from the ones over in Yemen. And they're certainly way different from the ones that are in East Africa. And I'm grateful to Tom McCoy and John Lavranos, again, that John Lavranos guy, for calling this thing Sansevieria dufarica. So that's the other part of this Ehrenbergii complex that's now been unraveled. I think we could put much of that to bed in terms of the taxonomy. So Lynn Newton was working with the Sansevieria arborescent group, the, the subgenus paniculatus. And uh, he had, you know, a Sansevieria arborescens is one of the oldest Sansevierias described. Here's a John Lebranos plant collected from um, Somalia, just to show you what it looks like. The type description of it shows short, stubby leaves that are of a certain length, usually 10 to 15 centimeters long, sharp edged at the ends. So this is what Sansevieria arborescens looks like. So this is why he went in and started reorganizing this group. Bagamoyoensis from Bagamoyo, Tanzania is not one of his plants, but we went back and found it at its type locality, and you can see it's, it's clearly a very different thing with slender leaves that are very flexible. This is Ascendance, which is this first one, that, one of the, the second one that he described, actually, uh, second species of these arborescent type that Lynn Newton did, and um, this is why. If you look at the inflorescence here, here's a dried inflorescence. It's like a candelabrum on this dried inflorescence. It's like a candlestick, and that's why it's called ascendance. And that's what separates it from arborescence, which has once the flower panicles come out at 90 degree angles. So it's a, a big difference. And then Sansevieria dumatescens is this other one, which has much longer flexible leaves. There's, if you haven't seen this species, I actually have some in on my sale table. You can take a look at them. They're very tactile. They're, they're very nice compared to those really stiff and sharp arborescent leaves. I'm going to get to this guy here in a second. 
But he collected this thing, which is incredibly impressive. He warned us when he collected it that it was very different from everything else. But look at how short these leaves are. Right now, my tentative name for this thing to describe is arborescence brevifolia because of those short leaves. You can see it belongs in the, the subgenus paniculatus, but these flowers, are, these panicles uh, are curving a little bit too much to actually be part of arborescence. So it remains to be seen how this is gonna play itself out. This guy's name is Weary Batala. Weary Batala had a, a Sansevieria nursery in Arusha, Tanzania, of all places. But Weary's big passion was traveling around by motorbike and finding new things to bring back to this nursery and cultivate. So um, I met him by actually, I think it was just totally vicariously, got some plants from him, and then Tony and I traveled to Tanzania and traveled with him on a couple of trips. Great guy. But uh, here he is at Lindy, Tanzania, with something else that's probably a new species that he found just wandering around in the bush. So uh, this is it, it's glossy leaves with these uh, crinulate margins, it's really nice. This is another thing he found that again, goes back to that Sansevieria macrophylla in South Africa. There's a lot of stuff on the Mozambique coast that's probably new and different. So one of the things that I want to do with Wuri Batala is his plans is to start to get a few new species out. Weary is not a taxonomist. The guy was a lawyer. He just hated the legal system in Tanzania. But the last I heard from him, he's running for office for the Tanzanian parliament. <laughs> but he collected all these plants and he took us to Ngari Nanyuki, which is kind of a nice place uh, north of Arusha, Tanzania. And this is uh, what we, I'm proposing to call Sansevieria rugosifolia as soon as I can get it to flower in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, here it is in the wild, showing these long leaves that are really rough. Glossifolia means rough on the underside, and that's one of the reasons why you should touch your plants, is to get that aspect of things. So, but the big one we found was, this is a really cool thing. So uh, we knew about this plant, and it actually, some of them had been circulating around the collector market. And so it was great to go with Weary to uh, central Tanzania to look at this stuff. This is a plant that I'm proposing to call Sansevieria batale with Lynn Newton. Uh, this is Weary holding that plant. You can see it's a very long plant. Um, and here it is in flower. So guess what? That's all you need to describe a species right there. If we would have just turned that into a squashed dead plant and sent it to an herbarium, it would be over. <laughs> but as Lynn likes to say, wawa. He called it West Africa wins again. That herbarium specimen was lost. So we have to wait till it flowers again in Tucson, Arizona in order to properly name this as a species. But it's just a really cool, highly variable thing. And that's the lesson here that I want to take, have taken away here is um, we really took us to all these localities where we found this thing all through central Tanzania. This is the kind of, it looks like a nondescript plant. You can't see any succulents there. But if you head into this dense forest right here, you find this stuff. Okay, these are, this is at uh, Igoma, Tanzania. You have everything from almost totally black type leaves to variegated leaves. You have here again some things with, with wrinkles in them to have more variegation. This is at Iringa, Tanzania. Here we are at Tenenkozi. These are the really tall ones. I uh, had some of these leaves. They were up to my shoulder, so those leaves were four feet long easily and very stiff too. They're really, it's really a, a great plant. Um, and this would be Sansevieria batale. Here it is in his nursery and cultivation. So uh, again, a lot of variability among these plants. But I want to bring your attention to this thing. Grigsby's has been circulating this plant forever. They don't know where they got it from. This is called superclum. And guess what I think it is? This is Sansevieria batale, another one of the forms from Tanzania. We don't know where it came from, unfortunately, but that's not actually unusual in the world of Sansevieria. But it is one of the batale groups. So it answers another fairly interesting taxonomic question in this group. The other thing that you need to understand if you deal with Sansevieria at all is there's two forms of them. One is the juvenile form and one is the adult form. I told you that Sansevieria batale leaves can come up to my shoulder when they're mature. This is the juvenile form, and this actually looks like another thing that has been in cultivation for a while called silver blue. 
is again the juvenile form of Sansevieria batali. It encompasses a whole lot of different forms of things. So when you're talking about Sansevieria, I need you to just think variability. You can't just say, oh, this is a blue thing and that's a green thing and those are different. No, they could be in the same stand, okay? There's a lot of variability among those leaves and that should be expected in a rapidly evolving species. So it's just something to bear in mind here. It's kind of embarrassing for me to show this photograph because we stopped at this particular location to take a bathroom break. And I walked over to this particular location and I did what I needed to do. And I looked down and saw this stuff and went running for Lynn Newton who was behind another bush someplace else. And um, this thing is really cool. This is another undescribed species that I've currently got growing in my house. I don't have a, a proposed name for this. I originally thought it might be one of Lynn's uh, species that he's recently described of Lunatifolia, but he says no, and he was there, he knows, and I think he actually has pieces of this in England as well. So the thing is, <laughs> you can trip over this stuff in a bathroom break for crying out loud. If you're in East Africa, it's kind of wild. Um, and speaking of another one, this is again returning to Patricia Poes in, in Guilford Poes' garden on the Lycipia Plateau. Guilford's been around. He likes to like to fly planes and land in obscure landing strips and then collect a whole bunch of plants and fly home. Well, he had this thing. And I saw that the first time and I thought, my God, that looks like something that John Lebrano's collected in Somalia. Where'd you get that from? And he said, oh, I got it from the Marsabit, the north slope of the Marsabit in Kenya. So I said, Lynn, we're going to the north slope of the Marsabit in Kenya. And we did. Marsabit's a big volcanic mess, and we found it. And there it is. Very unique thing. I currently have a working name of Marsa Batensis on this and have samples at home. Here it is again. With a, you know, again, it's, it's got those spreading stubby leaves. It's quite a bit bigger than Aaron Bergii, but it also blooms at a short size. So it's not, it's a very unique kind of thing and probably goes into the, the Aaron Bergii Aurora group out of Somalia as well. And also, again, I'm just wandering around in the bush and here's another broadleaf thing that's probably different up near the Marsa River. So uh, there's lots and lots of opportunity here for taxonomy within this species. I'd like to finish up by telling you where I think this genus is going to go in terms of, of upcoming taxonomic discoveries and, and new species. It's in that broadleaf group. I, I did a serious diss on Sansevieria trithasiata at the start of this talk, but now I'm back to these broadleaf things. When we first met Lynn Newton, he just had this vague interest in Sansevierias. He hadn't been totally infected by the Sansevieria virus yet. Um, but he said that all that broadleaf stuff in Kenya, ah, it's just all oh, Sansevieria rufilii. Everybody with Sansevieria rufilii. Like, uh, this is Sansevieria rufilii. I don't think so. Um, so there's a lot of this stuff that needs to be resolved. And Wong Chihinian, um did a big start on that in terms of trying to get some of this stuff broken out. And this is one of the ones that he did. This is conspicua. Now, um, conspicua is kind of nice because it doesn't have a whole lot of patterning on the leaves. It generally tends to be really consistent that way, which is very unusual in this genus. Usually the variability overwhelms everything. But conspicua seems to be a kind of a dark green uniform color, which makes it nice. You can identify that readily. But then, here comes Paul Bugwa, who does the flora of tropical East Africa. And for some reason, he decides that uh, Sansevieria forskliana is in East Africa. So he's got all these localities and has identified all these herbarium specimens. Just hold on a second. This thing's from Yemen. And it is very distinctive. And I have forms of this that are almost black in, in leaf color to these. This is a photograph we took in uh, Western Yemen of a sense of very first um, Is it really in East Africa? Really? Could be maybe in the Red Sea Hills, uh, Red sea hills of, uh, of uh, the Sudan, but probably not all the way down into Kenya, which is where he has it. But it, then again, he had Ethiopia up in Kenya too. So he was clearly grasping it from straws. But, Figuring this out, how to resolve these broadleaf species, is really where things are going to go very interestingly. Um, I'll finish with this slide, which is Sansevieria elliptica. 
Elliptica is a very interesting complex of plants that you see quite commonly. It's shorter leaves than what I'm calling rugosifolia, much shorter leaves, but it has that similar really rough back of leaf and really smooth front of leaf. It's a really pretty thing that you see in a lot of coastal Kenya and Tanzania. But the question really is, how does this stuff fit together with that stuff from South Africa? One of the cool things is that, that this kind of a field research just doesn't end. And um, there's a whole, again, when you're in East Africa, just take a potty break and you'll find the damn thing. <laughs> Thank you for listening.